Is this thing recording or that word? I hate it. How can I say world? <laughs> Two milli bedroom, yes. <laughs> All right, so move of the week, March 6th. I've noticed a big uptake in this trend of tiny homes. I don't know if you've seen these. Um, and then there's also kind of a housing affordability crisis going on. Uh, so a solution could be a coach house. A coach house. Yeah, have you heard of a coach house? Uh, I've heard of it, but I didn't know, that, is there some in Ottawa? Like what, what is it? Like, what is it? Uh, so basically a coach house is a tiny home. Yes. Right, it's located on your lot. And there's a few requirements that you have to check with the city to make sure that your lot is legible. Actually, I didn't even know they're called a coach house. So basically it's like a tiny home. And uh, yeah, you can definitely check with the city if your lot qualifies for one. The main things that you need to look out for though is that it has to be detached from your primary household. Your household cannot have a second dwelling, like a basement or a, a basement apartment, for example. If you don't have any of those things, then yes, you can build a, a little tiny house, I guess you can call it a coach house in, in the backyard or where on your lot. There's other regulations that are involved, meaning you have to make sure that there's a pedestrian path that's about 1.2 meters wide, and it has to be direct to uh, road access. And you might have to check what the, uh, the township or the city rules are for that. Because can, can you build one if you're at, like on a farm or? You basically have to have um, direct access to the sewer line and uh, a well. Those are the two main requirements that yes. I saw. Okay. Yeah. So Which it is, is good. Which is good. In the rural area. Putting these, these tiny homes will definitely help to create more homes for people. Because right now we're noticing there's probably a lack, there's a lack of inventory. And there's a lack, there's a home crisis obviously. We can't build them fast enough, especially here in Canada. I've seen a couple last year that are for sale in the Glebe area. That's right, yeah. People that have big long lots are actually starting to do those. And you know, it could be a good source of uh, income, secondary income, uh, Airbnbs, or if you uh, are in the doghouse one day, you can go sleep there. Um, but I, I, I do think it's a good idea. What, what do you think about that? Yeah, no, I never even heard of this. Uh, I kind of until we found the research on it and I thought it was a, a brilliant idea. Again, it's more housing for people more affordable too because it's a smaller little dwelling unit helps the primary owner because again then it's income so right, it's, there's more of an incentive for them to actually try to build these things yep. uh all around i think it's a it's an awesome idea and, and i'm really looking forward to hopefully seeing that more often hopefully we see more of those and i think that would definitely uh help uh, with uh you know some some type of housing anyways going forward so what Vancouver is doing to tackle their housing crisis right now is actually building these mixed use social uh, units. Okay. Not the best name for it, it's called Dogwood Gardens, but- Terrible name. Uh, it's one of four buildings that they're making where they're offering different rent rates for different rooms. So they have an allotted amount of rooms with shelter rates. So that varies um, compared to other units that have like a 10% below market value rental rate. So these, these are stacked units? Or? Yeah, it's basically just a big complex and then they have allotments of different uh, rental rates for different rooms. Okay. Uh, and then some of them that I saw are even uh, geared towards transitioning people out of supportive housing. So then they're kind of on their own and then that, that also opens up more availability for those who need a bit more help. Okay. Right? So I think that's a brilliant idea that they're doing. I know in Ottawa we have some subsidized housing and stuff like that, but the problem I think there, it takes sometimes up to two, two plus years for someone or a family to get in there. You know, I don't think it's super effective. So I do feel maybe Ottawa can benefit from something like that, but where would you put it? Like, there, I feel like we're so limited close to downtown. It has to be maybe a little further out or you know where we can put it? Nordstrom. Oh, a little more locally. Yeah, goodbye Nordstrom. Uh, you're out of a shopping center. I'm so screwed, man. I have to shop online. It's the only place I actually went. Did you know that? In the city? I know. Actually, no joke. I see your name tag. It, it's the physical, actual location I like to go to. Um, now I guess I have to shop online like everyone. So, yeah. so that'll be a huge, uh, huge loss for the Rito Center. That's crazy. I don't it's know. It's gonna be interesting to see what, what are they gonna put What is? Yeah. That's, that's, that place is huge. Yeah, no, it's multiple floors, restaurant on the top. Uh, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Rideau develops. Um, Cause yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be interesting for sure. And then it might impact, I don't know, it might impact the, the homes around the area. It might impact downtown a little bit, but it also depends what they put in there. Hopefully uh, they put something new and exciting for the city. Cause you know, we are boring after all. I know. Um, and then isn't your uh, your dream house on for sale? Hmm. So 
So there's this house. Okay. It's on uh, Sunset old, Avenue. Old Old Sunset oh, okay. Old Old Sunset Boulevard. It's listed by our brokerage actually, uh, Charles Sislik and his team. Obviously, they're amazing. This home, I drive by it every day to go to work, and I love this home. I've been I've been obsessed with this home. And if anyone's wondering how much does it cost to have a canal view from basically your living room and your kitchen, well, it's 6.75. It has three bedrooms, three bath. Two million dollar bedroom. Two million bedroom, yes. But it's a very nice house. Oh, it's gorgeous. I'll leave all every yeah. the link and everything. You can see the home tour. Yeah. Uh, I'll leave that uh, in the YouTube uh, link on the bottom. It's on sale now. It's actually a great home and I love it. And I'm curious to see what it's gonna sell for and who's gonna buy it. I'll be a lucky person nonetheless, but it was a great week. Stay tuned, we'll catch you next week.